With modding capabilities of the Skyrim's engine being expanded on a monthly basis, it feels like there's always a game-changing breakthrough being released in the community that further broadens implementation possibilities and modded endeavors, and thus I've decided to create another video within a viewer's favorite series. Welcome to Immersive Mods Episode 6. As mentioned in previous episodes, the word immersive is quite broad and could be applied to almost anything that improves the gameplay experience. Today's video theme will be Realism, a small collection of mods that takes certain elements of the game and simply makes them more realistic and dynamic. This video is sponsored by Dungeon Fighter Online, a blood pumping hack and slash 2D retro MMORPG. Default is one of the most popular video games of all time, with over 700 million players worldwide, available to be played on global servers on both Steam and website. Join millions of players from all over the world, utilizing 16 unique characters with endless customization, with over 60 class advancements to fit your desired playstyle. From April 19th, Take advantage of the 5th advancement for the Gunner class named Blitz and take down your enemies in style using a variety of new skills and abilities. DFO also has a variety of in-game events to celebrate new Blitz update, such as Newbies Always Welcome event, engaging new players with veterans to clear dungeons and raids, or creating an event character during the level up booster event, power level to 100, receiving rewards every time your character reaches target levels. You can also tune into DFO streams and obtain in-game cosmetics and exclusive rewards. Lastly, the team from DFO has prepared a special gift to help you on a new journey using the coupon code available on the screen. Links are provided in the description below and join the fight. Big thanks to DFO for sponsoring this video. Ever since the birth of Skyrim and its community, modders have released a plethora of atmospheric mods that configure the way weather behaves, with each having their own theme. These weather mods kept improving over time, with more and more weather types being added to simulate the ever-changing atmosphere of the province and to provide a dynamic feel to its explorers. However, the dynamic part never quite hit the mark. These weathers, although varied and plentiful, never felt like they are seasonal, but rather random and potentially chaotic for some. Now, you would probably assume that this is simply impossible, as we are talking about the dated game engine, and would probably ask, how would one even go about implementing this, especially considering that if you want to simulate winter and other seasons, you would have to have separate files for each model in the game. I always thought that this is simply an engine limitation that older games such as Skyrim will never break through, however, I was proven wrong. Introducing Seasons of Skyrim. Yes, as you can imagine, this incredible SKSE-based framework introduces four seasons to the province based on configuration files and it can swap models to rain, lods and grass, as well as to provide a dynamic snow coverage during winter. These seasons are shipped with the proof of concept automated setup for winter, whereby the framework itself will generate appropriate form swaps based on user's load order and with season's identifier, properly present concurrent season. By recognizing the current month using config file, the mod will swap land textures, activators, furniture, movable and fixed statics, trees, grass, flora, distant terrain and apply snow shaders to every object in the game during winter that hasn't been previously swapped. With its supporting mod Turn of the Seasons, that adds even more form swaps for each of the seasons, your Skyrim exploration will change forever.
Speaking of exploration, you might have noticed during Seasons of Skyrim Showcase that the flora is completely different from the original game, especially that unique models were present for all seasons offered by the mod. Flora overhauls play a big role in completely changing the landscapes, and it's not a secret that the base game's limitation to a single tree model holds back the game's aesthetics and, quite frankly, its lack of diversity is simply unrealistic. One of the coolest and most varied tree and forest overhauls came out early this year and provided the landscapes with a breath of fresh air with its diversity, density and variation, and is fully compatible with Seasons of Skyrim. Nature of the Wildlands reworks pine and rift forests by adding over 100 new forest meshes, keeping the balance between beautiful and performance friendly, and additionally increases the vegetation density where appropriate. Next to that, I like using Cathedral Landscapes as a grass mod of choice, as a lush green and yellow blanket of vegetation depending on a region, completely changing the landscapes of the province and making certain areas almost unrecognizable. As far as gameplay features are concerned, one of the elements that feel like they belong in the original game they were never taken advantage of is hunting. The mod Hunterborn, although an older creation, still sits at the throne as one of the best mods that attempts to introduce hunting elements into the game by overhauling the looting system and introducing a progression path to your hunting endeavors. Each kill will require field dressing, the first step in rendering down an animal for its goods. After dressing the carcass, hunters can skin the animal to use in crafting or sell it for profits. Butchering the animal's carcass will provide you with source of sustenance and custom type meats, and lastly, harvest alchemical ingredients used for unique potions and poisons. The mod also introduces unique hunting knives, with each having their advantages and disadvantages when tending to animal carcasses, and additionally adds systems that allow the player to lure their prey, as well as additional source of dynamic crafting. Combine Hunterborn with Carrier Carcass mod for extra immersion points, allowing the player to carry the animals on their backs, and even place them on their horses. Personally, one of the most amusing ways to play Skyrim is to roleplay as an assassin or thief protagonist, as the original game offers not only a quest surrounding this playstyle, but also additionally encourages it with in-game systems. As I always try to polish this playstyle with mods, the mod that makes this gameplay style more realistic would be relaxed sneaking animations. It's a simple animation change that overhauls overly hunched down sneaking position and turns it into something more believable. Next to that, I like including three coolest mod releases that came out late last year that overhauls lockpicking interface and its base comes from security overhaul lock variations. This mod is an SKC-based framework utilized for replacing the overused lock model with unique lock variants. It gives locks their own unique model and sound effects based on chest and door type, and its core is comprised of Dwemer, Falmer, Snow Elf, Apocrypha, and Snowy Chests and Doors. But it doesn't just end there, as it is a framework itself, it can be expanded with additional lock types which mod authors took advantage of, and did just that. Security Overhaul Regional Locks adds regional variant lock models for the aforementioned framework and includes locks for Markarth, Whiterun, College of Winterhold, Solitude, Raven Rock, Riften, Helmithrin, as well as Safe, Cage, and Strongbox locks. Lastly, in this group of three, Security Overhaul add on includes even more variant lock models such as Nordic locks, Soul Cairn locks, Tension cables, Underwater chests, and much, much more. Exploration plays a pivotal role in the immersion element when playing any RPG title, and for the sake of accessibility, Skyrim opts out for a fully unlocked fast travel system. While there isn't anything wrong with that, I always personally felt that having an option to hop between travel locations on demand shrinks the size of the land and ruins the immersion element of the role-playing experience by completely devaluing the distance and excluding preparation. One underrated mod tackles this element by taking inspiration from two games and merges them together. 
Soldier and over signposts allow the player to fast travel only by interacting with signposts around the province, taking inspiration from Witcher 3. This system is a perfect middle ground as it doesn't artificially remove fast travel, forcing players on repeated round trips, and at the same time encourages planned routes by disabling constant map hopping. Additionally, the mod takes inspiration from Zero Dawn's fast travel system by introducing a minor preparation element where players can craft a travel bag using gold, apples, and bread. This travel bag works just like the travel bag from Zero Dawn, and as long as it's in the player's inventory, can be used and will be consumed upon fast travel to any previously visited places. This travel bag has a carry weight of 10 points, so permanent stacking of these items is discouraged in an immersive way. The mod is fairly flexible and because of the way it's made, is compatible with any mod that adds more signposts, as long as they're utilizing the vanilla reference. As many Elder Scrolls fans celebrated two decades of Morrowind's existence about a week ago, I figured I'd use this opportunity to showcase two Morrowind-inspired armors that have been released early this year. Generally speaking, when it comes to armor releases in the recent past, most armors are either ported from different games, or their implementation is severely lacking. While there isn't anything wrong with that, I personally tend to put huge emphasis of element of how the created armor has been implemented into the world of Skyrim. It's simply more immersive to have the armor users install be seamlessly integrated into the game where players can obtain them by completing quests or collecting necessary materials in order to craft them. Armors of the Velothi hits all of the checkboxes and does so with incredible quality and implementation. The armors include Battle Mage like set called Narciss Watchman, a roguelike light armor set by the name of Redoron Exile, two Bone Priest armor sets suitable for mages and necromancer themed characters, each possessing similarities and differences from one another, an Ashlander Seer set. Armor suitable for alchemists and scholars alike, Redoran Watchmen, an intimidating light armor set for the wielders of swords, a brute like heavy armor set with an appropriate name, Rhino Beetle, and lastly, Remnant Klalu, a set feeding for researchers. Besides its unique nature and their incredible mesh and texture quality, armors of the Velothi are implemented in a way that feels like they belong in the game. Each set has been assigned to a named NPC or their location of interest and additionally spread throughout NPCs of relevance on an island of Solstein. Additionally, players are able to craft these armors by hand, but not before completing certain quests for NPCs of interest that are connected in a certain way with each individual set. The players are also required to possess certain knowledge in blacksmithing and have elven smithing perk obtained prior to crafting these armor sets, and they're available in 2K and 4K texture quality. That's it for this episode of Immersive Mods. As always, make sure to endorse all authors and their creations, and please consider subscribing to this channel if you enjoy the content. If you want to go the extra mile, you can also pledge on my Patreon, where I make sure to provide my supporters with benefits in a form of special followers, my own load orders, additional guides, and in-game modded setups. Consider dropping a like on this video if you enjoyed it, and let me know down in the comments below what you liked and disliked about it, and I will pretty much respond to almost every comment down below. Your feedback is the main reason this series is still ongoing, so let me know if you still enjoy it. Other than that, thank you so much for watching, your continuous support is immensely appreciated, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.